Hello guys, welcome back again. This is the part three of our Angular application using .NET Core Web API. Yeah, we I'm just trying to build a very simple application using both the uh, the Web API on the .NET Core backend that we use the front end like Angular application. So we just continue straight away from where we left. Obviously, the first one, I mean the first bit, we had a client start up Angular client with nothing really working on. But for now, what we do is we just build a very simple product um, product service on the web API side so that we can consume it with the Angular client. So we just get on straight away. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do. Then we can get it, we can keep it going. So first of all, we go to the Angular API, um, the startup.cs. So inside the services, we, we add service. Since we're going to be calling it from um, a different domain, so we're gonna add calls. So that's the add calls. Then on the, um, the, on the, the app configuration side, we add um, app.use use course. So we can use that services that we've just subscribed to. So as you can see, it's a very simple stuff, but before we can actually even do something really better, what we do is on the root folder of our API, we add a new folder and we can just call it models just for this sake. So inside our models, we add a, we add one class. So we just wait for it to connect. So this class, we just named this class um, um, the product. So as you can see, we've got a product here. So what, what we do is we're not going to make it any 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 big deal. So we just pass in some small some small properties. The first property will be our product ID, and it will be of type string. So we just give it straight to GUID. Uh, so we split it dash and then we take the the thief element so what we do is we create this, this property okay so the next bit is we add price as well so our price this will be equal to we just convert it to double so we put um random dot nest um so new random dot nest we just say 40 so we set it to 40 and we add this property as well So the next bit, we're just gonna add um, a string, type name. So that's all we do for this class. So it's inside the same folder, this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna add a very simple interface. And we can say I product repository. And we just add a very simple product list we get a simple list of products. So we just say get products. So that's all we're gonna do for here for now. So we add another one. This will be um, a class. We can say product manager. Did this inherit the I product repo. So we just implement 
So as you can see, it's very simple stuff. So the next bit is obviously we're going to say observable collection. Observable collection of product. This will be our product. And we can just instantiate it straight away. So inside our, we add a new constructor. So inside the constructor, uh, we check check if product is empty so if it's empty then we add a couple of products so we just add the name Apple uh, we just copy and paste and add so I mean whatever you want to add is your own so we can just say banana we can just say uh, mangoes we can just say um, pepper uh, we can just say onions and that's uh, as you know you get the draw so basically this is what we do all we need to do is we just return our products so that's what we do for here for now so we can just we can actually make this read only it's not a problem so we, we, we come back um, to the API startup so inside um, our service services, we can add our services dot add transient, and we can say i product repo that correspond to the product manager that we've just created. So that's all we do for here for now. So as you can see, so it's, it's a pretty straightforward stuff. So just to test it now okay we've got our cause we've got our use cause out here use cause that's fine we add a new a new application I mean a new project and we can make it just a normal blank a normal console application and we could just say angular test So now we've got um, a simple console application here. So what we do next is um, inside it, uh, we add a, a, uh, a, a new get package. So we can call uh, da, 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 da. it's a HTTP formatting. Um, of course, we have to browse it from the internet. Okay, so we use system.net.http.formatting. So that's all we need. So we accept all the other dependencies. Then we go, we're done with it. Um, So uh, seems to be well it seems to be an error showing here, but that's no problem. We will come back to that later on. So we just get this side sorted out. So this is what we do. Um, the API side. We run it again to see. Actually, we have to stop it before we actually run it. There's one more thing that we have to do. We, we got to go to the product controller, products controller, and here, as you can see, we are, return, we are returning a string. So we make it an enumerable, an enumerable product. An enumerable product, and then 
Um, inside here, what we do, we, we just add um, the I product repository. So I set the repo. And we initialize it inside a constructor. Yep, so what we do is we return the repo the repository dot get products. Yeah, so this is what we return for now. We can just make this read only. It's not necessarily important. So we just run it again to see what comes out of it if we can get um um, the products so as you can see once we run it we've got um we've got the values returned so the next bit of course we just try it with the on the, um on the console application just to see if we can just make it like a, a cross origin request so what we do is uh is we start first of all we're using http client we can call this client and we instantiate it straight away new http client so we could say uh the, 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 the variable results is equal to clients dot get async so we pass in that that will be um uri then we re get the result so we're just gonna copy the uri later on i guess that's our uri here right here so i'm just gonna copy it and we put it here so it's a what forward slash API forward slash products products <laughs> yeah that's that's what we've got here now so this is what we do now we can check if um if the results contain <laughs> it's I mean it's okay it's returned fine this is what we do uh, We can say a variable products is equal to resource dot content dot read as async. So we can say so. For I mean, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna add a, a very a class here, simple class. We can even just copy it. the product. We're gonna need a product class here. So we could say we can add this product class inside our console here. So we have a product here. We could just remove the constructor. It's not necessary. So we could say I enumerable products dot resource. So we say if products dot any. Okay, products dot to list dot for each products we console dot right line console dot right line then we could say p dot name so we just print out the names of the product so I mean this shows that we can just convert it to IRA that's not necessarily it's not necessarily important so as you can see we've actually converted it to IRA so now this is what we would do we don't have that up running again but we could just copy the URI open a new edge then I'll, I'll paste the URI here
So we just have a look. Uh, this is what we're gonna do. We will put the console the right line. Press enter to continue. Uh, console dot read line. So that's all we do. So we can initiate but I mean two projects for now. So you come to the solution, you go to set startup projects. So here we start multiple ones. So we start the test and we start the IPI. We apply the changes, okay, then we start them. So now we've got both of them running. So I literally, we can, we're gonna have to, so now we've got that loaded. So what we do here is um, inside um, the console, we press enter and we should get, actually it will close automatically because I forgot to put read line. But we should wait to see what comes out of it. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stop it and check, uh, check what's going on here. So here, let me see, API products. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the uh, console dot read line here. And then Okay, so okay, so you rerun it again, but make sure this bit you make it HTTPS instead. So we wait for it to run again. Okay, so now you press enter on the console to to make that request to see if we can get so as you can see we've got the details back from the from the service so the next bit of course we will, we will try and do the same thing using the angular app so stay tuned and catch up on the next video bye bye have a lovely day